Well, hello, hello, and hello, and welcome to Root Workers Round the Table. I'm your host, Papa O. And I am your host that's been missing for the last oh, two weeks, Sister Sonia. That's because of the wedding, you know, and that, it was a wonderful wedding. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I should have been a better friend, but, you know, the cake was delicious, and I took another one home to have some sweet dreams about, and <laughs> I took it home, but I thought, oh, I could be like the ultimate friend and bring it to you in the hospital, but I ate it. You ate it, and the piece that I got was dry yeah, because was I didn't dry. know I had a piece. I didn't know I had a piece of cake until like two days later, and by the time I got the cake, it was dry. I'm gonna be I'm so gonna be honest, you know. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I had at the wedding. I had a strawberry piece, and I had a lemon piece. And then I brought a lemon piece home with me. So theoretically, I had three pieces of three pieces of cake. But I needed I how, how else do I keep up my sweetness? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you got lemon because now you can't have lemon. Oh, oh, should we? So I'm glad them? you got lemon. I I am should getting treated. Them? I'm getting treated for tuberculosis right now. I don't have active tuberculosis. I have latent tuberculosis, but I am getting closer and closer to a transplant, which this is this is another step to get me closer to transplant. This, then dental, and then I'm done. And then it will be, I will be put on the list. And I will, I really want, Wait. to be honest, I really want a living donor. You know, a living donor gets a lot of benefits. Like if they ever by any chance lose an organ, they're automatically put to the top of the list because they made a sacrifice, you know? They gave another person a chance at life. So, but if, if I don't get a living donor, it will be about two weeks because I'm so high on the list. That's, I'm, I'm totally okay, okay. with Okay. I know with living donor. I actually know someone who's a living donor. I don't know her personally, but she is on one of my uh, Facebook pages. And um, she hasn't met her recipient yet, but she was so excited about it. Can I put the dogs outside? Do you mind? Please. I'll be back in just a second. I'll still be you here. keep talking. And I really think that I could find a living donor, somebody who would want to give me a kidney. Um, I, damn it, I've been nice. <laughs> I've been, I've been sweet. This whole time. I tell you. <laughs> but lab. Her chocolate lab pees on me every time he sees me. First of all, it's so big, the chocolate lab, it comes up to my hip. I am also, I am quite the um, doctor, looking more and more like Dr. Moreau as we go <laughs> on. What dog was that? Are we discussing Cooper? That's the one. Are we discussing Cooper? Cooper who pees on me. Yeah. Cooper has a big bite. Um, who I don't allow to bite anybody. And if he's not allowed to bite you when he wants to bite you, then he gets mad and he'll pee on you. Just ask Papa O. Oh, he's been peed on. <laughs> twice. The dog has peed on me twice. But you know what? I don't take it. And honestly, heart. he's not a big biter he's a big he's like he yeah, loves you he just marked you so now i'm part of the family he just marked you so no other dogs can have you mm -hmm. Aww. 
So it can't be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you so, belong to Cooper now. I belong to Cooper. <laughs> I'm I'm Cooper's bitch. <laughs> yep. So you are you're Cooper's bitch. <laughs> so how did um like, they yeah the wedding? Honeymoon? Are they on their honeymoon? <laughs> um no, they're not going to go on a honeymoon until next year. Very they're delaying the honeymoon, but. What? That's okay. I mean, next year will be better. And uh, let's talk about why why Sonia was in the hospital. The wedding was perfect, with one exception: the baby, the bride and groom's baby, was hospitalized for respiratory distress. But he's fine now. Tomorrow is his two-year-old birthday. Well, I'm just. He'll be two tomorrow. I am going to put up the video that you sent me of him talking to somebody in the crib that was not you. Do you remember that? Nope. Yes. Because you were tired at that point. Because I called you right back after I got the video. And you were like, I'm I'm exhausted. (laughs) But I'm exhausted. Yes. But it's it's true. Uh, I talked to the nurse about it and the nurse said it's very common. The elderly and babies um, generally talk to people in the room that aren't there. And Everett was um, he was upset. Of course, he was hospitalized. He had, you know, the EKG monitor on the -hmm. little baby had the heart monitor and his IV and his pulse oximeter. So there were wires everywhere. So he was really upset. And then he turned and he faces the opposite direction and he starts laughing. It's just laughing at the top of his lungs. And then he started babbling and then he started laughing again. So he was communicating with someone that was in the room. Problem was there was nobody else in the room. It was just me and Everett. And, and, I'm, and I'm gonna you tell can share you, the video if you want, Papa O. It was a crazy little video because all the lights are out in the room except the except the light from the window, and so it looks it looks a little hmm, looks a little scary, but you know, I think that one's coming from being crossed over, and one is going to being crossed over, so they are. They are foot deep in the in the veil. You know, I think that they can touch a lot of things that we forget to see. I would say we can't see, but I think it's more we forget to see. Right. And his grandmother passed over last year, and her presence was felt at the wedding. I mean, her urn was at the wedding, mm-hmm. and every even when he's at home, he will look up at the ceiling and he will laugh and he will communicate with someone above him. Mm -hmm. So Allie thinks that his mammal may have been in the room with him to comfort him. See, I'm going to tell you, that freaked me out when you said it today. When I saw you today and you said, my Mm -hmm. man, I was like, oh, no. Did the person who, the person when I said what that it was his mammal? Mm-hmm. I thought it was the person who dislikes me, and I was like, "Oh no!" But then she's doing fine. Oh no, okay. not my mother. Yeah. No, not my mother. My mother's still alive and kicking and ornery as ever. And can I ask a question? Sure. The la- the lady who we were sitting at the table with and her boyfriend was that the big guy's kid or the big guy's niece who was dating your mom? I oh, said, my mom's former boyfriend? Yeah. 
boyfriend? That's his niece. She was very, she and her boyfriend were very nice. And I treated them yes. very well. <clears throat> you know, if they needed something, I would very ask. nice. Was, they, they were very nice people. Aw, thanks. I, thanks. I think you have a very nice... There are two things that touched my heart. You know, Sister Sonia has a very handsome, rough and tumbled southern male husband but when you get him around children oh my god there was this little baby girl <laughs> and he he got on he wasn't on it he was like crouching down all the way and playing with her and tickling her tummy and then waving a thing of keys in front of her i was like he is so sweet with kids Oh, Ruben, yeah, he's very good with kids. Now, I'm wondering, are you on, for Allie, the Baby Factory, done or six more? Is Allie's Baby Factory, Allie, the Baby Factory, done? Well, see, the thing about it, at the wedding, it came up that uh, uh, your daughter... Taylor, Taylor was like, I want six more grandkids. And Allie was like, mm, no more. Taylor six. wants six children. Taylor eventually wants either to adopt, foster, or birth six children. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. She wants a huge family. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of children. That is almost a classroom full. And she's single. So, hello, uh, gentlemen. The daughter is now single. Um, her name is Taylor. Uh, she's beautiful. Very single. <laughs> she looks she's a lot like you. Sister Sonia. She looks a lot like me. And she's also, well, I think she's prettier than me. Um, you could very She looks very that. happy. Hmm? You could see the resemblance. She's very happy. That's she for is, sure. She, very happy. And also, if you need somebody to tell you like it is, she's also that person. Even Papa Ocean. Like her please. mama. <laughs> Even Papa like her sometimes gets put in this Mama. Um, all in all, it was a good wedding and a good weekend. Um, do you want to talk about some current events? I know you want to, so I'll let you start. <laughs> I do. I want to talk about the Little Mermaid. No, no, no. A whole new world. That was that was that was yeah. under the sea. Wish I could be. Wish I could be. And yep. I am totally for it. I am to I in theater they have something called uh, blind casting, where you basically don't look at the. You don't look at the person, but you look at their, how they're performing it, you know? And that's how I directed, because that's how my professors taught me to direct, where Hollywood directs on common appearance, you know? And I'm going to tell you, I am, I am a Game of Thrones person, you know? And I have seen, I watch House of the Dragon. And there is a guy from, who's part of Tar Targaryen line lineage, not Targaryen, he's, uh, oh, I can't think of the other one, Valerian. But he's African American Don't with white. Don't give anything hair. away. You know, it's to me, and okay, go with your little mermaid. Let's talk about your little mermaid. Okay, so uh, 
I know we went from like uh, the Little Mermaid to the House of the Dragons. I'm like, why, Eddie? Why? Because of the god awful wigs that they wear that they put on the people in the House of Dragons. It's awful. That's but not anyway, what I was back about. to Little Mermaid. Um, no. Yes, the song "A Whole New World" is like totally, totally explains the new Little Mermaid, a new fantastic point of view That's because Aladdin. she is black. <laughs> huh? You are in the wrong musical. Oh, no, That's it's Aladdin. a whole new world. Oh my God, that is Aladdin. That is. <laughs> part of your world. Is but it part. is a whole new world. And Sonya world. just messed it up because that's Aladdin. I think it's sort of part, part we're of it. We're under the sea. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. We're under the sea and we're part of their we're world. Under the sea. We're not on a magic carpet. Sonya, no. get your movies right. But get it right there's ursula but, um, fortunate souls. Haley bailey is black that's all i know and it's a wonderful thing it's a wonderful thing it's awesome why all these white people hate me to me i don't get it well the thing about it in the little mermaid and house of the dragon and uh the new the new lord of the rings series out you know, it is. These are all fictional characters. You know, only only New Age pagan people believe in things like elves and dwarves and fairy creatures. I at least I do. I'm very big on Earth spirits. Is there a lag? I just don't. Under I just don't understand why white people won't just shut up about it. I mean, I'm just going to be blunt. It's like the white, I mean, uh, what was her name? God, um, Snow White, <clears throat> excuse me. The first Snow White film was uh, came out in 1937. You have literally had white princesses in Disney since 1937, 85 years. Let these little brown girls have their princess. Do you Let want them to have her. Do you want to know what bothered me about the princess and the frog? What's that? All the other princesses, how do they get with their thing? You just wish upon a star. Yes. Tiara in The Princess and the Frog had to wish upon a star and work very hard. Yes. I <laughs> that that First of all, it's real, but I caught that and I was like, that that shows a big problem in our society. There was no magic fairy, no godmother, no fairies, no magic for her. She had to work her tail off and kiss the damn frog. And, and the whole thing was for her to get a restaurant to work in. A restaurant. No castle. No castle. No king. No crown. She did have a prince. She she married Prince Naive. Uh, not Naive. Uh, can't think of his name, but it's similar to that. But a restaurant? Come on now. Was she really even a princess? She, she was by... It, there was some loophole. But I don't know how it happened. Well, she married a, she married a prince. Yes. And then she became a queen. <laughs> Let's just let them have their moment and have their Ariel, their black Ariel. I mean, we have white Jesus. Why can't they have black Ariel? To me, I, th I think that, to me, you're preaching to the choir. Um, and it's, for me, it's all about learning how to be um anti-racist you know mm -hmm. because believe it or not i know you're going to disagree but believe it or not we have like racism that has been that we have accepted as culturally acceptable you know things that we've heard and have sort of have become prejudice in our head you know 
Yes, lots of things have been culturally acceptable. It doesn't mean they're right, but we are just now becoming what is the term woke and acknowledging these cultural racist things that weren't acknowledged before. I am, I, and I know this is going to, this is going to shock you, but to me, I didn't realize how bad the problem was is until somebody showed me it, you know? I did not realize that all the issues that were still plaguing the black community. I know. It, a lot of people don't realize that until you have somebody actually take you by the hand and you do the research and okay so in Nashville this weekend I went to a Titans football game and after the game I went to I'm going to shout it out Nashville City Kitchen the best catfish and the best wings in Nashville little old tiny restaurant right on the outskirts of the stadium black owned black family owns it and my friend was hesitant to go and I'm certain the reasons why she was hesitant to go, but I can't speak for her. And I convinced her that we needed to sit and eat, you know, the catfish and the wings. We ended up sitting there from 6.30 till well past nine. They shut the restaurant down and they were still sitting with us. The family that owned the restaurant invited us to the table and we sat with them. And they opened my eyes, which I thought were already open, but not quite open enough. And they really opened my friend's eyes to a lot of racism and stereotypes. But we opened their eyes, too. It was such an educational sit down, but a friendly sit down at the same time. She was talking about how she was from New York and she doesn't experience racism in New York. And the gentleman, the gentleman said to me. He said to her, he goes, in the words of Malcolm X, he goes, do you want to know what the South is? He said, anything South of Canada is the South. He says, you have racism in New York. Honey, they just ain't wearing white sheets. And, and she was like, okay. And then she started talking about um, the, the Jewish community. And, and racism within the Jewish community. And I was like, see, there's... I for don't know. Some, but, for some reason in New York and New Jersey, the African American community and the black community have a lot of common ties. I'm not quite sure why. You said African American and black. Did you mean uh, African American, African -American and, Jewish, and Jewish? Jewish. And the Jewish. They're both the minorities and ostracized. That's the common bond. Now, I'm going to tell you, I grew up in New Jersey, in inner city New Jersey, and everybody had their own neighborhood and stayed within their own neighborhood. Like, I Me grew tell up, you, the, that, the wild. See, I grew up in a very, all my neighbors were Polish and stuff like that. And in the South, people more mingled. There wasn't so many white differentiations, you know? There I don't know what happened. There weren't very many white um, white people to hate. <laughs> Up north, there's more white people to hate. They even separate them. You know, the funny thing about that restaurant was I went to the bar and I think the uh, thing is, you didn't take me. Oh, there was a lady named Regina, and Regina was African American, and she, I met her, and her name was Regina, and uh, we talked about the wedding and this and that, and then I showed her a picture of Allie, and she kind of looked at me, and she looked at Allie, and she said, "Wait a minute, she's she's biracial, she's black." I'm like, "Yes." And then she said, well, how did you, 
And I, I said exactly how Allie came about. Yeah. You know, and then I was like, well, Regina, when a man and a woman love each other very much, I mean, I didn't say it so nice. I didn't say it so nice. And then she was like, oh, I am so sorry. She said, I should have never opened my big mouth. Sometimes I open my mouth before I think. And I said, yes, and so do I. And that's why I was like, oh, my God, I just told her I had slept with a black man. It, 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 well, it's, everybody sleeps with a black man now and again. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening. But at the end of the night, we were hugging. And it got to the point to where we were becoming good friends. And then I got a drink, right? And then this is how how wild it was it was like reversed on me i we were the we were the minority and we got our drinks and regina looked at me and she goes taste your drink i said okay tasted my drink she goes is it weak i said no i said get a draw i guess i get a straw have a sip she goes okay let me see your friend's drink and she goes no no she watered that down on purpose hey you come here put some more vodka in that treat these people like family Mm -hmm. treat them like family they treat it as differently based you know and i'm like i've never experienced that before getting watered down drinks just because you weren't a part of the family <laughs> or you weren't a part of that community they were like well yep you're gonna pay top dollar but i'm gonna water your drink down for sure isn't that and crazy I never oh, experienced it, that. it happens so, in wow. It happens in a lot. It's not, that is a multicultural thing, you know, where if they realize you're not part of the family, you get things differently. Or the community, yep. But I had never experienced that. That was wild. I had, I had a very good professor at Murray State University, uh, Dr. Jones. He was my anthropology teacher. And I took the black experience with him. And the weirdest thing, I was the only white kid in the class. And I didn't realize that like my <laughs> my midterm, he not my not a test, but my midterm grade was a C. Now, I was not a C person, and he made me come in and show him all my notes that I have taken in class. And I was like, oh. and he, he would say things like um, about uh, white people smelling like wet dog, you know, and I can't say I understand what prejudice feels like um but i got a hint at it you know and you know i have seen lgbtq aggression homophobia if you may um but other than that you know i try to i try to look at the best in every person when you meet somebody, you should think that they're God and treat them as such until they tell you otherwise. You know, you never know. Whatever happened to that idea that God may be in your presence or an angel or a spirit. Right, he sends people in the form of angels just to see how you'll treat them. You know. He sends angels in the form of people to see how you'll treat them. Look at, look at what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Oh, speaking of treating people uh, nice and things, I experienced uh, something new today. A trans female truck driver came to my work. Was she was she uh, male to female? Yes. Okay. Nice. From what I could gather. Of course, I wasn't going to say, oh, my God, you're a trans female or are you a trans female? But you could totally, you know, I got the gif and her name was Kara. And I treated, I mean, I just, I was just like, wow, that's pretty cool. I'm going to tell you, um, 
one of the things that I appreciate for this new generation is their being able to give us better definitions for things. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you, back in the day when I came out, you had basically two choices. You could either be gay or bisexual or lesbian or bisexual. And then transgender were sort of put to their own. Because, you know, you always got to leave the bottom part off <laughs> in every group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, this year, I realized that I am not bisexual. I realized that I am demisexual. And you're like, what's demisexual? Right, and that's a term I've never heard. It is that I don't, I don't fall in love with the gender I fall in love with the person. Is that not pansexual? No, because pansexual, I think, still sees, I think, still sees gender. Okay. Like for for me, it's not a gender thing; it's a mind thing. If I can connect with them intellectually, I become attracted to them weird like i've never had a one night stand really i have never all 44 years of me i have never had a one night stand wow now we're playing the game of truth or dare <laughs> no, oh. that, that's one of the things with demisexual if they don't know the person they can't perform sexually oh we're a pansexual they're ready to go. <laughs> yep, that's true. And I could never be a demisexual because, you know, well, I've been married 28 years now, but there have been points in my life where I've been one and done. So, I mean, it's just. I just never, I never got there. And I, and it honestly, it really bothered me for a long time because I felt like I was miss, missing a quintessential experience. Like I, I was talking like about I, that today. Like I felt like them. I was left out of the community. I was talking about that with my friend Doris today. We were talking about Taylor and how Taylor's going to kill me on this talking on this podcast about her, but her being 25 and single. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And Doris was like, you go, Taylor. You live your life. And I was thinking, yeah, she she's living her best life. And I thought, you know, back in the day, we talked about it when I was 25, because, you know, I'm now <clears throat> 53. Um, when I was 25, it was ex- you were expected to be married and already have multiple children, not just one child at 25. We're talking two or three kids. Or if you weren't married, with multiple children, you were either an old maid or you were a slut. There was nothing else. You were either a slut, an old maid, or married with multiple children. And I was like, and today we have this term called slut shaming. And it's like the 25 year old woman, we encourage her to be single and happy and carefree and and and, and her sexuality is her business. And we well, don't slip the game. You know, I think, I think that we have. We've came so far. Yeah, I think though we have been scared of the naked body for way too long. You know, and that's where I think slut shaming comes in. And I think slut shaming comes in also due to jealousy. You mm-hmm. know, it and, it and it shouldn't. God gives us one vessel to work with and our job is to make that the most unique and beautiful beautiful vessel that we can you know right and i think of slut shaming too as in uh, sexual terms as in a woman should be able to have sex and enjoy herself and be single and if she's done she's done and move on to another partner Without being slut shamed, without being called a hoe or a whore or a slut, why can't she be just as sexual 
or choose to be that way if she wants to be as much as so as a man and it not be okay. It's more okay today than it would have been when I was 25. Well, I am going to tell you the lady who changed my life was in my 40s and that was Lizzo because um, when when you are overweight you are encouraged not to be a sexual being you know the world makes you feel like you're ugly and hideous and you sort of move into move into a background you know and i think with lizzo saying you know the problem isn't with me the problem is with is with them you know and i found that right. very healthy i found that i found that to be yes that is totally right if he don't love you anymore just walk your fine ass out the door <laughs> Exactly. I love Lizzo. She got an Emmy. Lizzo got an Emmy and she cried. My God, the girl was wonderful. See, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people who are getting close to getting the, like the triple crown. You know, they have the, they, they'll have the Grammy, the Emmy, and then the Oscar and the Tony. Mm -hmm. Not many people had that it, for a long time. I'm going to get me a truly. She's getting a drink. The other thing I recommend is do something that feels good to you. Like one of the things that helps me feel beautiful is I use this. This. And the beard oil smells like cherry Coke. You know? And I get my get my brush and I don't know. Feels good. <laughs> feels good, less filling. <laughs> it took years of therapy for me to finally realize that I am a beautiful person, inside and out. Like years. Like um, the one thing the therapist had me do was stand in the mirror and pick something about myself, one thing every day. Or no, started out one thing a week that I liked about myself. And that was very difficult. Because it didn't have to be anything big, just something small. And I think I might have picked my eyes. I think I might have picked my eyes. Or yeah. Or maybe it was my boobs. I can't remember. But it was one thing. And then every week I would choose something else. And then it began to add up. And then the next thing you know. It took a lot of work, but I'm like, I'm beautiful. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. I love myself. I do. See, there are parts of me that are still loose like rags, you know? That, like, I know I, know I need to go to therapy for. You know, one of the things that my mom helped me deal with is my father got cancer back in the 90s. Okay. And then he started telling people, everybody, that I put a curse on him to give him cancer. Okay. And my mom said to me, then he obviously doesn't know who you are. Because I would never do that to somebody. Right. And you wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I am. I am the spirit of hugs and lovings, <laughs> cuddles, the beautiful spirit of plenty. You're a beautiful person. Even though you saw me and you're like, you're becoming less plenty. <laughs> I have I have lost a toddler's amount. You know? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you. With... You've lost the whole person. Oh, yeah. Um with well the part of that i never realized people were in that size ever i thought those were children <laughs> no there are adults that are 150 pounds okay <laughs> but it you know 
we are going to use some magic to help get rid of this tuberculosis faster. You know, we're we're looking at some different, uh, some different crystals and stuff to use. Now we're still using modern medicine. I'm letting you know that, but we're trying some external things to use. And what about Reiki? See, I, I don't know it. I don't know how to do it. Um, I have not been attuned or atoned or. Um, I know that Iajani has. Um, and I know Greg and Roy. Yeah, they have too. Roy's the Reiki master. As I'm pretty sure Iajani is now a Reiki master as well. Um, I'm pretty sure. That beautiful creature needs to lay his hands on you. <laughs> I thought the thing with Reiki is they don't lay their hands on you. <laughs> they get really, really close. They mm. tease you. They tease. <laughs> Sonia's like, stop teasing me. Put your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. No, that's Pentecostals. They lay their hands on you. I was like, she's hiding two pieces of rose quartz. Do you know that Mama in Western Kentucky would keep a piece of citrine and rose quartz in her bra. She would. I know you're frozen. You're frozen when your face is not speaking. Come back in, Sister Sonia. I am going to I'm going to Put you in a waiting room if you can come back. Boop. It's me again. We're waiting for Sister Sonia and seeing if she can come back. If not, this will probably be the end. But she used to put, she was a sneaky little root worker. She used to put stones in her bra and she would always put a lucky penny on her seat when she would do card games. So her, her real family would try to pick her up and make sure that she didn't have a penny under her butt. Because when she had a penny under her butt, she made money. She made moolah. <laughs> so we, you always checked Mamma. But, you know, she always gave love and tried to take all the negativity away. So that is something. She was a community builder. And one thing I also want to tell you, I, I lost it again today. Look. Oh. I have got another sty on my eye. I don't know whether it's the stress, but I'm having to get out my gold ring and my compresses. The other thing that I'm going to try is using baby shampoo. Now, what I learned is baby shampoo will not affect the eye. And since it will not affect the eye, you can wash it all in there and clean it up really well. So that is my goal today, is to see if I can get baby shampoo to do the job because I really I'm I anytime a doctor says ointment I cringe a little so I'm like mm, don't say it we'll leave that for the last option we'll leave that we'll leave that all the way at the end so and basically what it is it's a pimple on your on your eyelid or right near your eyelid so and I figure if I wore more makeup, I, don't know. I do use like essential oils and stuff like that, but not so much on <laughs> with makeup. It took for me to do eyeliner, it took four people to hold me down because it, <laughs> I don't like anything near my eyes. I'm sort of like a, sort of like a camel that way, <laughs> you know? Well, sometimes when I get talking, I get frothy at the mouth. And <laughs> it just drives me crazy. But I guess Sister Sonia is not coming back. So we've had a wonderful time. Welcome back with me and Sister Sonia. Be kind to one another. Love one another. Reach out to one another. And like Grandpa Sackwitz always used to say, don't be an asshole.